the whole fight takes place here. Here is the void, right? And you look at his stance. He's in a, a beautiful stance. We'll throw that right hand. Every single time they started fighting, he kept getting closer and closer and closer. He's so much closer. He's in his punching range. And here's a knockout shot. And Alex Volkanovski always circles into the power. I mean, that shot was just beautiful. And then he puts Alex Volkanovski down. When you have to negate somebody's specialty by running, it does you no good. You have to get better at X, Y, and Z. You have to. We can't let him get me against the cage. F that. What's going on, boys? Welcome back to the channel. And we have something new for you guys. Uh, we're going to do a breakdown of this fight. Uh, Ilya Deporia taking on Alex Volkanovsky. I know in my, you know, my recent videos, I've been talking about that moon shape, how Alex Volkanovsky likes to stay on that moon shape and keep his back off the cage and always circle away, away from his opponent's inside body kick. He did a lot of it against Ilya Deporia. And then eventually Ilya Deporia worked his way across the void and landed the knockout shot. Now, this is something that my producer, Michael Wanzorber, wanted me to give a try and see if you guys would enjoy this and see how it goes. If you are new to channel, make sure you like, subscribe. Also, hit the bell to know go live. So once I said it before again, Ilya Deporia versus Alex Volkanovski. This is something a little different for Alex Volkanovski. He's fighting somebody who's a little bit the same height, not taller than him, like Islam, Max Holloway, Yair, Yair Rodriguez, and Brian Ortega. So as the fight, uh, you know, obviously I see all you guys in the comments, Instagram, YouTube saying I had Alex Volkanovski winning. Yes, I did have Alex Volkanovski winning, but my gut told me that Ilya Deporia is going to find his way across the distance and be able to land a knockout. Um, obviously, my people who I, I hang out with, like my dad, um, Scott, and everybody at Jiu-Jitsu Gym that I see on a daily basis, as I was talking to him, I was like, I just feel like Ilya's going to knock him out. That's why I went less on price picks. 92 and a half. I didn't think he was going to land 92 and a half because I didn't think he was going to make it that far. All right. Here we go. We're going to break this down. Um, obviously, uh, these pictures were put together by my producer, Michael. Um, we're going to see a lot of things. So one of the biggest things when it comes to the void, that's that's the whole fight, right? The whole fight takes place here. Now, the one of the things that Alex does very well is here is the void, right? And Illy, he gets here. He has his, his axis, A-X-I-S, the X and the Y. Don't know which one it is. He's always circling his head around this way and ducking down low. Always confusing his opponents. That's why a couple times you see him slip a couple of Alex Volkanovsky's jabs. Now, the one thing that he did do very well is he did introduce late kicks, but we'll get there soon. Now, Alex Volkanovsky likes to stay on this moon curve. He likes to stay here. He goes inside body. He's trying to force Ilya Deporia to come out of this shell that you see all Ilya's fights. He stays in here because this is where he's the safest and this is where he can generate the most power. And he's pop, pop, pop. He's fluid from this combination. You see a lot of boxers get there. Now, Alex is always staying here. In this time of the fight, Alex only came across the distance, the void, and forced the exchange here against him a couple times. This is where I think you beat Ilya Tepori is you have to meet him here and you have to fight him here. If you stay on this moon shape, he's slowly going to push you out, out against the cage. And that's where he's going to find his combinations. Once again, you go back and watch all the other combinations where he's dropped uh, Josh Emmett, uh, the other gentleman, tall gentleman who dropped Ilya Tepori a couple times and the former champion, Alex Volkanovsky. He's looking to wade his way across the void, get you against the cage and knock you out. That's why you see Alex Volkanovsky. He's always staying on that moon shape because once he gets here, the moon shape is a lot harder because now he's working on angles. So that's the biggest thing I'm saying that Alex Volkanovsky stays in this shape. And Alex Volkanovsky is doing a good job of moving around him and, you know, making him miss because even Ilya Teporia said that he was getting frustrated and was shocked by how fast he was. But you have to do this for 25 minutes. Granted, the Alex Volkanovski said he was going to add more tools into the fight. He just didn't get the opportunity to get there and do it. And I also just finished watching Izzy Adesanya's uh, breakdown video. And you can learn a lot from people of game plans when you watch people from the same camp. That's exactly. Yeah, but it was on. The mo mo he couldn't get in there. Just the, the he did, what, like four or five punches he threw. And which one caught him? The fourth or fifth one. He was saying that he was trying to, he was doing a good job of not letting him get there. They knew if 
Alex got against the cage and Ilya Dupuri was there at his distance, he would have landed a knockout shot. That's what he was saying. He had a hard time getting there. And once he got there, it was game over. Okay. So that's kind of like that frame. There's a void. There's that, that, that moon shaped arc that he likes to stay on where he can, like I said, hit that inside and that body kick, which he landed a lot. And it gives him opportunity to run and a circle on the moon face. Now, right here, you're also going to see as Alex Borkanovsky, there he is. There's Ilya Teporia. Now, Ilya Teporia is overextended here, but he has a high guard up, so he can't counter this way. Also, Alex Volkanovski is trying to get out of the way, so he, there's no time for him to counter. And you look at his stance. He's in a, a beautiful stance. He'll throw that right hand, fully extended. Left hand's down, so maybe a check right hook can get him. But once again, once you have uh, decided to flee the attack and get out, all Alex Volkanovski weights going this way, so there's no way he's going to be able to generate power unless he can go back this way, which is typically like Sean Strickland when he runs away from the attacker, the aggressor, you're not in a position to counter. Where you guys look at the Patrice Pitbull, he typically stays in his karate stance and looks to blind fight and try to counter somebody coming forward into the void. But this is Alex Volkanovski getting doing a good job of getting outside of the void where Ily Tuporia can't reach him. Typically, Ily Tuporia can reach his opponents, a lot sooner and in the press conference he did say he has a harder time he was getting a little frustrated and he was su surprised how well uh, alex volkanizer was able to get out of the void uh, out of the way of any of Ilya Deporier's shots so this is a little bit of a snippet of him running away and right here look where his head is he's he's moving out of that uh that axis the x and y He's moving there now typically when you start to see somebody go in this this axis usually he says here his head is here he's going this way he's going this way and he also goes this way typically when you have something like this, this is when you throw a jab and you throw a high kick you're just trying to you're throwing stuff out there to see if it's going to land because is Ilya Tepori out of his shell 1000 percent i believe this shot probably landed for alex volkanovsky now this is the thing that Ilya Tepori is willing to do this is what gives him that knockout uh, shot because he pop 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 he goes across the distance measuring to get there and then once he's able to get there he looks to go his combination but here is that x and y i don't know which one's x and one's y it's gotta be one more dynamic strike now right here boom this is alex volkanovsky moving on that moon face right here and it was this these cab kicks pissed me off he was able to time a beautiful cab kick on alex volkanovsky because once again Alex moves on that moon curve and he ended up kicking him right there. Spun Alex Volkanovski around, but that's something I typically don't get to see from Ilya Teporia that kind of got Alex Volkanovski thinking about it as well. Those cab kicks, man, it doesn't take much from those cab kicks to add up to where your mobile is kind of shot, but beautiful. Okay, right here, boom. Every single time they started fighting, he kept getting closer and closer and closer. Now here, look at the posture of the two. Now granted, his hand is down, right? He's throwing a beautiful uh, left hook. His posture is going this way and this is exposed. The only way for him to be able to do anything, he can throw this check hook, right? In turn, kind of like what Paulo Costa does. Or he has to back up and then be able to get his weight going forward to be able to fight because this is not a position for him to counter or fight, right? This is a position right here. Now when he wants to shed, uh, roll the shoulder shoulder block for the right hand he can do it but he's he better hope that he's damn well good at rolling because that's a small time of, that's a small window to uh not get hit but right here he's backing up and you see Ilya Tepori he's slowly getting closer and closer trying to find his range to get the right distance to be able to knock him out and right here once again Ilya Tepori using different options to punch he slips this jab from Alex Volkanovski goes right to the body. He gets to slip the jab because of why that X, that X, the axis, excess, the axis, whatever it is, right? He's able to slip those. He's on this side of the axis and he's able to deliver a nice body shot. Granted, it's not flush. It's almost pair. It's a, uh, it's almost skimming um, Alex Volkanovski because he's also going like this. So beautiful head movement from Ily Duporia. Like I said, that, 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 the, when he's going on that, that head movement, it's very hard to find his head. And look how much closer he is now. He's closer. He's inside the void, right? So the void probably started here. Excuse me. Well, the void, he's closer to the void. The void now, 
There is no void. He's here. Look where he's at now. His body's here. His body's here. He's so much closer. He's in his punching range, right? This is what I'm talking about. He waits his way across the, the void. He punches inside of it. And now he's in a good position to come over the top with a beautiful overhand, right? Granted, uh, Alex Borgonazzi is going to keep on backing up and going to his moon face to get away, which the moon face, he does go into the right hand, but he's being cautious of it. That's why the leg kick landed a couple of times. Where I like to go against, I like to go, I like to go into the power. He's running away. Well, yeah, hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's circling into the power. I like to circle away from the power. Excuse me. A little confusion. It's hard to see the angles of the, of the fight, depending on which way I'm looking at it. Right here. Now, Ilya Poirier gets there. He lands a beautiful right hand. And credit to Alex Volkanovsky for having this hand up to block with left hooks. But he slowly get in there, and he lands a beautiful right hand. And once again, he's going this way. He's, he's backing up away from the aggressor, which gives Ili Deporia the distance to be able to land the right hand. Okay. Another one, another right hand over the top, over the top of the jab landing. Granted, it's not, it might be a little bit of flush, but these shots aren't kill shots. These are, uh, shots that are just, uh, that are just landing, but not flush landing. They're not like uh, a kill shot, like Doo. Cool tattoo, dude. <laughs> right here, another angle of it. He's dropping. He's dropping that right hand in there. And each time he's doing this, he's always finding his 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 range and his rhythm and getting closer to Alex Volkanovski. And here's a knockout shot. He's landed this shot many multiple times, but he's always been further away. Now, granted, you see Alex Volkanovski. His back is against the cage. There's nowhere to run. And Alex Volkanovski always circles into the power, right? In this fight, when he got the chance to measure. He's always circling to the power. That's why that shot was even more devastating because he circled into it. And Ilya Tapuria got to the right distance and he was able to measure before he threw the shot. Right? This is why I'm saying th this is a hard... I feel like this is a hard fight up to the point we didn't get to see the other uh, tools or the other stuff Alex Volkanovski had in his bag to display against Ilya Tapuria. But when you have to... Like, this is my thing in fighting. Like, when you have to negate somebody's specialty... And when I talk like this, this is Matt Hume channeling through me, okay? When you have to negate somebody's specialty by running, it does you no good. Like Matt will say, you, Matt will tell me this, you have to get better at X, Y, and Z. You have to. Because I don't want to have to go up against somebody where they're so much better than you are and you just can't go there. Right, like when I fought Rod Tang, the game plan at first was like, "Oh, we're just gonna, we're just, we're just gonna try to run." And I said, F "That no, I'm gonna fight him. I'm gonna use my angles of footwork, and I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna throw a barrage of combinations, and that's what I did. And a lot of people thought I did very well in the Muay Thai fight because I don't want to, like, even in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? Everybody pulls guard. Oh, I pull guard because I'm going against a better wrestler. Oh, I'm pulling guard because I'm going against judo guy. In gi jiu jitsu, that's different. You can do that because when you pull guard, you have to have a connection and you have to start working. But for me, I refuse to not go into battle not prepared. So I am working on my judo. I want to throw people. I don't want to use my wrestling to do that. So I'm forcing myself to become a better judo player. Not saying I'm going to be the best judo player, but I'm studying judo because I want to learn how to throw. This is what I mean. So when somebody's like, okay, we can't let him get me against the cage. F that. Get me against the cage. See what's going to happen. I'm going to tear you up my clinch game, my elbows, and then I'm going to wrestle the, I'm going to wrestle you. And then when I get my back off the cage and your back's in the cage, you're, I'm going to come in one, two, angle, six, two, body kick, knee, elbow. Like that's how my mind works. And that's, that's coming from, that's because Matt Hume has instilled this in me. He, he wouldn't, he would refuse. When we fought John Dotson, he says, we're not going to run. You're going to go get him. Go and get him. You might get dropped three or four times, but go and get him. Sorry about the rant. But right here, um, he finally finds his mark. He gets he gets Alex Volkanovski against the cage, and he's able to land that knockout shot. And that is a knockout shot right here. And once again, Alex Volkanovski moving in that moon face, and there's another shot of it. He's moving in that moon face. I mean, that shot was just beautiful. All, all his weight. All Alex Volkanovski weight is going out the cage through his head, right? Through his head. And then he comes back with a beautiful left hook. So typically when uh, Ilya Deporia throws, 
he throws in bunches of when he goes in his combination he's usually three or four shots it's body body head head or body head body head it's always a box combination beautiful and he lands that right hand shot and it just devastating and then he puts alex volkanovsky down even though alex volkanovsky his last fight he did get dropped and that's the thing i, I just don't want to see alex trying to negate like on that moon face running from him the whole time he's got to be able to develop the skills okay i'm gonna one two angle two three and come in and clinch move i know i keep talking about the clinch but it's so unutilized in mixed martial arts even in one championship when you see the muay thai guys fight they can't even use him for the clinch game because they see it as stalling but the, i don't know i just feel that's the biggest thing going forward and there it is there's a champion with his beautiful family and maki kawa first round management managing uh Ilya Teporia and his whole team so congrats to Ilya Teporia. You know, I'm excited to see what he's going to do next. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking about the rematch. Um, Sugar Sean O'Malley wants him. So we'll see what happens. But boys, if you guys enjoyed this breakdown, make sure you leave a like and comment and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to keep on enjoying my 1942 Don Julio. Uh, why? Because I can. And I work hard and you guys do too. Cheers, Mike. See you at the next one.